Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the PCL. We have one more set to go in today's lineup of matches, and it is going to be Elevate, uh, the team that has always performed very well for us in the console league and have some people who have won some championships uh, on this roster as well. So uh, excited to see them go up against Cats on Mars, who is technically the second place team. But between first and second, there is a bit of a divide <laughs> <laughs> in this competition. Ah! Just a little bit. Just a little bit of a divide. Now, here's the thing. You have to talk about Cats on Mars and the way that they perform. We always make fun of their name because it's kind of funny and yeah. we can go into that. But, you know, G-Pan Velocity, you've got guys like Taco Bell Waifu, uh, you know, people who have made slight names you want to talk about. You want to talk about them. They're fun to watch. But can they get the thing done, you know, with what they've shown thus far? I think their best chance is if Elevate start to do like some wonky stuff, right? You might yeah. be able to see some momentum in that type of area. Elevate are just too good, I think, otherwise. We barely had a chance to see them. I know that like there's there's some rule, like everybody has to be on broadcast the same amount, but I feel like Elevate has been shafted in that rule. I've seen a lot of Cats on Mars. I've seen a lot of E-Storm retaliation, but I ain't gotten a chance to see too much Elevate, which is why I'm super excited. Any way that this set does go today, that's the way I'm excited for it to go, just because I want to see some teams, some actions, some players that we haven't seen in a while. Well, let's uh, talk a little bit about Elevate and, uh, you know, moving into their roster, Exodia, or Exodia, I guess Exodia is the way to uh, talk about it. He's basically got a KDA that's second in the league, which is pretty dang strong. Damn. 7.09. Uh, so this man showing up pretty nicely. Who's, who's, who's won? It's got to be somebody on this team. I mean, they are plus 20. Well, or, actually, no, they're the perfect choose plus third. 30. Choose third. I don't know who is number one. Maybe it's maybe it's Prosper. Let's give Blue five seconds to answer. Well, because I'm like, even even Flashpoint has has lost maps. And granted, it's the only one, but Flashpoint sure. has lost points on in some of their games as well. But this Elevate squad has been quite literally perfect through this phase. They are 10 and 0 at the moment. I believe 30 maps, like you said, haven't, haven't lost a single one the entire way. And Blue, you're past five seconds, but I see the bubbles. <laughs> Blue is typing. Ah, uh, I see the bubbles. 9.61, he says, so it's about two higher than uh, currently second and third. So leading in quite a way. Prosper is third. But who is it? Shu is fourth. Right, okay, but who's first? That's the info we need you to lead with. I'm just kidding. Come on, Blue. Come on, Blue. You're Great my boy. Job. Look at this. Look at this. Fantastic stuff. Jaguar <laughs> Falls, map number one. And uh, as we continue in, all you need to know is they've all got really good KDAs. Let's put it that way. Playing Vivian and getting a lot of kills on her will actually really inflate that that'll number, do it. though. That'll, that'll, that'll inflate it all. Got a couple of great frontliners in front of you, keeping things safe. Your path is paved, fresh asphalt laid out in front of you, and you just uh, you just drive that monster truck over anybody and anybody. That's right. Get that uh, you know Dodge uh, what, Ford F one fifty Raptor. Park yeah. It in, park it or in you those... could get twenty nineteen Motor Trends Truck of the Year, the Dodge Ram. I mean, the Dodge Ram's hard to beat, but the oh, Ford God, Raptor. <laughs> that, that is a badass. That truck. is a badass truck. And, uh, I mean, it takes up two parking spots, but it is, I think it's worth <laughs> it. <laughs> it's twice the car. Well, you're twice Tw the man for Twice driving. the man, twice the car. There's hope yet. It's just uh, the, you know, twice the size. Simple math. Simple math here. Of the car. Of the car. Twice big the men need big trucks. Yeah, that's kind of what I think. Because I'm, like, in shopping for, for a huge truck. Because I, I realize my presence, it's just, I'm so Give huge. I yeah. need something to match. That and would you go for the motor motor trend truck of the year? Twenty nineteen motor for trend truck of the year. Dodge the, Ram the is, uh, is is definitely where I, where I'd put my chips. <laughs> if I had to build me a log <laughs> cabin out in the woods, or because like you know, because I'm such a like you know military guy, should I go for like an old school banners. Humvee? Like try to bring mm. it back then. I feel like that fits my persona pretty nicely. Um, do you hate? like high miles per gallon numbers. <laughs> you know, honestly, the lower the better, just like uh, my deaths per game in Paladin. I got something for you. Okay, all right, thanks, man. Well, while we're figuring out, you know, the, the car shopping experience, Elevate, they've gone, they've shopped for a few champions. I think they came out with a pretty decent deal. Amani, Atlas, Barrick, and Leon, not bad. Yeah, and the, the last pick Strix is like, is something you can do if you're feeling it. And I think there's, we'll talk about like, Strix, yes or no, in a second, but like there is no backline dive right now for Elevate, mm -hmm. but Jaguar Falls is like con confined enough to where it definitely worries me a little bit because Strix, Tyra, 
And Nara, I mean, this is like as close to no mobility as it gets for cats on Mars. So if Elevate get a nice chokehold on a fight, it's it's gonna end. You're gonna know that it's gonna go their way before it really officially does. Yeah, no way to get out of that bad boy. Well, we'll see if they can do it as we head down to our casters to get off this last set of the day. Elevate, cats on Mars. Let's send it down to Dave and Gore. Thank you guys. Fourth set of the day, about to kick off and. The big question mark is, do Elevate lose their first map of the console league season today to Cats on Mars? No. All right, you hit it up. I pack just it don't, up. Let's go don't see it happening. <laughs> I'm interested to see if Cats well. on Mars can do it. I think It's just, yeah, Elevate are playing incredibly well. And I think that's the thing is it's they been a minute. are just so far ahead right now. It's actually at that point where they could feasibly drop this 3-0 as much as they want and it wouldn't really make a big difference for them. They are so far ahead yep. of the pack that they have such a substantial lead. And I don't see them dropping anything out of this. They play so well as a you team. Want, you want to know a little uh, a little nugget that Here's was dropped on me? Nugget. Where's the, what, the I was nugget? I was interviewing uh, Envy the other day before our PPL matches. Elevate actually beat Envy on a on a couple maps the last time they scrimmed, well, apparently. There you I go. Think, I think there were a couple wrinkles in there, but... Uh, Sort of a testament to how well Elevate are playing. They, their their eyes are set on land. They realize that they're far ahead of of where they're at right now. They're scrimming minor league. They're scrimming uh, Premier League teams, and and they're looking good while doing it. With that said, I, I agree with you. I don't think, I don't think today is when they lose their first map. We'll, we'll get a good idea of the Elevate that we're going to get uh, within the first few moments of this map. I think, and and how this map goes out, but. We've only really ever seen one Elevate this season, and it's the fully dominant, not losing a single map Elevate. Three O's across the board here for them, firmly in place going into MSI. You forgot one one little adjective in there as well. The only getting better every time we see yeah, right. them Elevate as well. Like That's the one thing I think they're bringing to the table that most other teams right now aren't in the console league. And I'm seeing it out of Flashpoint a little bit, but I feel like Elevate have been the ones who are... Again, I was using the comparison of, like, this team's two steps ahead of you. Elevate's, like, 20 steps ahead of everybody else in the league right now. Like, I, yep. I can see in scrims, I could see in things changing, that they probably do take some losses to other number one teams, like yeah. if they scrim against Flashpoint yeah. or something like that. But knowing that, I mean, these guys are looking to play PML teams. They're looking to play PPL teams. Like, yep. they are constantly looking to get that experience and using it. Like, that's oh, the one my. thing that every every argument I have seen against, you know, crossplay or anything like that where, where people have been upset with it, I just point to Elevate and be like, if they can do it, you can do it. Like, right. they are putting in the same amount of work. They're good players. And if the counter argument is, well, we're not Elevate, then it's like, well, then, you know, be Elevate. Like, get better. <laughs> like, I don't know what you want me to tell you That's at fair. that point. Like, Elevate are really good. They put in the work to be really good. And I love watching them play. They're very, do you think Elevate, Week 11 Elevate, would beat Week 1 Elevate? Um, yes. I think they would. Because Week 11 Elevate gets to come in with Atlas and Imani. We've won Elevate, <laughs> won't know what hit him, dude. That's actually very true. That's a really good point. We've won Elevate doesn't even have Atlas. That's right. I mean, what the heck? What the heck do you even we do here? We don't even know what he does. Illusory Rift tops off the health bars of the red team. Dragon burning away at Cats on Mars. Overtime is starting to, well, it's topped off right now, but starting to go back and forth. Elevate are the ones who are going to benefit from point number one here. Cats on Mars had a good percentage on there, but a, a very clean, calculated team fight from Elevate was able to retake it, recapture, find point number one. And we, we highlighted Exodia in, in the pregame, but Emmett Payne, I think, is really the X factor on this team. Yeah. I mean, he is, he is the, I think, the highest KDA in this league, and for good reason. I mean, the rest of his team really helps and, and builds him up, but he's a great player and sort of the X factor, I think, in this lineup. I think this is, it's one of those teams that, <laughs> the only way I can think to truly word it is they just, they just have five all-stars. Like, everybody on that side is really good. Cool Matt, though, going to finally be able to find some, too. Get a little reprieve here as he gets aggressive. Strix on Jag Falls, something I normally would go on and on and on and on and on about. But admittedly, I think we're seeing partially why it can be good and sometimes why it can't be. It's going to be decent if you play it right. Cool Matt, admittedly, yeah. has been one of those players who has been willing to pull out Strix and some of the more like odd scenarios. I think we we saw his Strix on Stone, Stone Keep, Keep. yeah, yeah okay. a couple a couple weeks ago, and it looked really on really the, good. One of the three te teams that he's been, <laughs> been on in the last like four but, weeks. But, I mean, <laughs> we, we I think he's the when you look at Cats on Mars, Cool Matt is sort of the X factor on that side. He's he's had some really great games, and Cats on Mars have been trending upwards. Unfortunately, now uh, 
they're at the point where this one's just too out of reach. Elevator just too far ahead. I don't even yeah. know if it would matter if it were back in week one. I think Elevator just that good. Uh, but Cats on Mars, I think, have that to hang their hat on. The fact that over the past few weeks, as a team like Elevate's been improving, they've been improving sort of at the same clip. Oh, yeah. Uh, but Elevate's just sort of at a whole nother level right now. And they look to get this one pushed in. But you see it here. I mean, this is... This is not a clean push. We, last Jaguar Falls we saw was a 4-0 in like eight minutes uh, from the opposite side from heating up. So Cats on Mars, they're holding their own right now. And, you know, I'm going to be really harsh to then give the compliment, right? So I'm going to start this off, and it's going to sound really mean. Because All right, here is. we go. <laughs> when this region started, <laughs> All right. it was Elevate. Yeah. And then a bunch of unmemorables. A bunch of, like, it was three teams that it was just, like, it didn't matter who they were. They were never going to, like, and, yeah. and pretty You're much right. no matter who what you looked at, stats-wise, whatever, they didn't matter. They weren't going to make it to land. They were never going to be first. They weren't going to be elevated. And then as time went on, Cats on Mars made a significant change, and their play style just got better and better and better. And Cool Matt there being able to showcase why it's important to be able to find a flank. He gets rid of the Imani, just gets rid of the Dragon. But that's where Cats on Mars are now, right? Like, I mean, look at this. This is almost a 1-1. Like, Elevate, if you had said after the, especially after week one, right? You're looking at week two and you're like, are they going to go 1-1 with anybody? Like, is, right. is there ever going to be a point where they don't just 4-0 their opponent? The answer is no. No. At that point in time, they just look so much further ahead. But I think Cats on Mars are, they're the aerial arise of this region, right? right. Whereas Elevate is the flashpoint. Maybe take it and polarize it a little more. They're a little further apart than those two. But I think that's just such a huge commendation for Cats on Mars. No, here, it has to be. That they've been able to do that. No, and they've, they've raised eyebrows, I think is a good way of looking at it. And I would agree with what you said. I mean, this is, it's like the Elevate region and then the three other teams that have to play against Elevate. But over the past few weeks, Cats on Mars and even some of the other teams in the region have, have, have really improved. And while Elevate are the ones going to MSI, certainly at this point, um, I think looking over to the second split, I mean, it's going to be a tough a tough nut to crack to beat Elevate, but they're, they're definitely trending upward. Uh, cool Matt with some, some good plays on the Strix to start things off here. Not a common map for yeah. snipers, but he, like you said, he tends to make it work sort of wherever. It is 2-0. That was a hard fought 2-0. They, they held defense pretty much until the bitter end there. Five ultimates ready for this point fight. Two. Only two for Elevate right now. And Emmett Payne's the guy who's Jeez. taking this game one, over. One, 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 eight. eight. Cool Matt <laughs> being able to put his name on a lot of kills and, and definitely making sure that his team is staying in it right Ooh. now. But when things like that happen, it becomes a little more difficult for your team to be able to come forward. But they find some side kills. It's a one-for-one one trade. Admittedly, I'd say Atlas is a much bigger pick than the Strix. I think so. Transic back to base. Shield's going to block off a little bit of the damage. Mr. Pickles as well drops Emmett Payne, so that's a good trade. That's a good start here for Cats on Mars, and they're going to have the fast cap on their side. Elevate were able to get to 54%, trade out a couple kills, but it's Cats on Mars who answer back. Look at that wonderful top damage in the game where there's an Imani and a Leon. Well, as I say that, Tyra takes over the top spot, but on the red side, it's Wonderful who holds that top damage spot. The Illusory Rift is going to get nice Elevate nice and healthy for it. That's oh, he gross. hits the wall, though, on the <laughs> way out. Oh, he breaks his back. That's so unfortunate. Exodia and Ultimate Pain, or <laughs> Ultimate, Emmet Pain, excuse me, capitalize on that little misstep. Trenzic adds one as well. That's three down for Cats on Mars. And it looks like Elevator going to capture point number three. Imagine throwing up a wall to protect yourself and then getting rewound to the other <laughs> side of that wall. And then you have to drop it. Like, that's the only thing. If Inara couldn't drop her wall there, you box yourself into the fight. Luckily, yep. you can drop it. You still kind of box yourself into the fight. But they come through. And even though you, it was a misspeaking moment from you, I think Emmett Payne gives the ultimate pain to the his ultimate opponents. Pain. Yep. Anybody who goes against this man is going to feel his wrath. There's just, I don't know, I mean, we, we talked about They've Emmett They've got Payne. so much. they got I was Ultimate say, Pain, they yeah. have Exodia, who's going <laughs> to obliterate. Like, they just, it's so packed on Elevate. Uh, that's, that's exactly the point I was just thinking about. I mean, Trenzic, I mean, we don't even we don't even say his name as much, but he's an incredible player playing this Atlas so well. I mean, just running down the members of Cats on Mars right now. This payload's moving a lot faster than the first one did. Dome Shield, Dragon, uh, the Exile, soon to be ready for Elevate. Nothing except through time and space ready for Cats on Mars right now. This could go in before that's even up and ready. It's getting dangerously close now. This next team fight is going to be the one that looks like it's going to decide it. Down comes the Dome Shield. Cool, cool Matt's able to find Trenzic, so a little bit of space now. 
uh, for Cats on Mars. He's going to come back after a short respawn. Wonderful. Just Ooh. trying to hold things down. That's a good through time and space on Emmett Payne. Wonderful is very low. Still a minute left, though. If they're able to get back, regroup, they'll have another couple tries at this. And they have a couple ults coming up as well that are going to make this a big difference. They used the dome shield to try and get around that last corner, and it didn't quite click. But you're going to have the Illusory Rift. You're going to have yep. Exiles. You're going to have a Dragon. You're going to have, well, Emmett Payne just being able to stay alive or pick up a kill with the Enlightenment. Those four ults are crucial and key to be able to come through to it. Because if you're looking at this, and this is the way I would cut it, Elevate, normally when you're up, let's say 3-2, you don't want to use those ults, because what if it doesn't go through and then you lose the next fight? And you're up 3-0. You can lose a fight and have it not be the end of the world, and now they're going to have that healing coming through Ooh, the Illusory Rift. That's a good route. The angles are good for Exodia as well. Emma Payne, that's a two-kill hero. The dragon comes out right in the face. But Clever Puff, he doesn't have the damage. Oh, he does have the damage. <laughs> I was going to say, maybe the dragon could burn away. Doesn't have the damage to do it, though. Emmett Payne's going to drop the con. Just trying to stay alive as Taco Bell Waifu, unfortunately, not going to be able. Seismic Crash tried to come out. Looks like the payload's going to go through here. A five versus three to maybe end. A G-Pan goes down, and that's all Elevate need for the 4-0 on Jaguar Falls. They just look clean doing it. Yep. And that's kind of what we expect every time we see Elevate as of right now. Just because, I mean, again, like you were saying, Envy saying, well, you know, like a couple of scrim maps, like they have taken maps off of yep. us. That, I'm going to go ahead and say, that is a very big point. And if that is not sinking into your head, you need to get that together because that is how good of a team Elevate has been. Yep. And that's where they've been for weeks. And they're playing that well here today. 1-0 to Elevate to start off our fourth set of the day. Let's send it back to the desk and hear their thoughts. Thanks, guys. Back on the desk. Not too much to go to in depth on in this set, but of course, Elevate so far taking the lead and doing what they should do, which is close out the game. Nice exile at the end to seal the deal uh, and a really interesting fight between a, a dragon and a clever pup. <laughs> that was close, man. I got to say it was closer than I thought it would be. There's a little sweet spots at times where you can body block yourself with the dragon, but... I mean, he was right there. Clever Pup was in Exodia's face when that dragon went off. That was a very bold play. Momentum, he'd just gotten a nice little double off his Frost Bomb. Was feeling good about the rest of that fight. But unfortunately, Big Man came up over the horizon and had something else to say. Not a lot of risks taken in the draft here from Elevate, and that's what I think would need to happen for Caps on Mars to potentially grab a map in this set. If they continue to play solid kind of van vanilla ice cream paladins, I don't know if there's going to be much of a chance for the Cats. Yeah, it seems like there's... A lot of opportunity for Emmett Payne to keep increasing his KDA. 3.8 here, but uh, he is leading right now overall in the league. You've got pretty much the top three on this squad and doing a great job. Uh, three of the top five, I would say, on this squad doing a great job of keeping the momentum. Great eminence there, 1,100 damage. If you can ever get those off, it's so impactful. It, it's kind of a cop between a, a hard, uh, a rock and a hard place because you, you can ban them out and try to do wacky stuff, but if your draft isn't as flexible as well, then you're going to take away picks that really help you to stay in contention uh, with a team like Elevate. So it's kind of hard to imagine what type of draft would put them in an advantage position. Absolutely, especially on Frog Hour, we have to shift gears super hard. Already running Strix on Jag, I hope they feel good enough to run it on Frog Isle. That's yeah. something that you, you want to look at with teams of like, if you lose with something in a set earlier, you need to sometimes be able to identify that it wasn't necessarily the problem mm -hmm. and be comfortable running it back right. uh, if the situation arises for it again. Elevate start with the Imani ban this time. So already we're going to see something a little bit different from them. And you know what's interesting too is that when you look at Elevate and the way that they approach drafting no no problems taking away big threats if they can't get it kind of respecting cats on mars saying you know money just big big champions we're gonna ban those out but it also puts in the conversation of are you going to ban out mccall are you going to ban out atlas are you going to ban out con no okay well yeah we don't you don't have as many dps picks but we have got all the big tanks and we're happy with our guys to to perform on them they're feeling good about the Atlas here, which they will snag first. Khan and Makoa just not really looked at as much on console. He'll get picked up if it comes to that. And, you know, people don't shy away from it necessarily, but he's just not at the top of the pecking order. Yeah. At this point, Khan Victor locked in for Cats on Mars. That looks like a solid pick for them. For Barrick here taken it. And Barrick, with his flexibility, has just, for me and me, continued to rise in his efficacy, even in console, whereas you, you could see some champions 
yeah, maybe Ryzen PC, you but still not have that overlap. Just the best point tank in the game, in my opinion. And Vivian here giving Fight. them a much needed Lose boost Fight. in consistent Lose. damage. It's going to be very hard Lose. for Khan Lose. if he does have to go on the point in a rush 99 kind of situation to sustain some of that damage. Run. Yeah, Barracks, you know, people have just gotten really good at the character, I think. A nice little loadout has been Don't uncovered. Yeah. That Rocket Boots bowling ball style has not always been the choice. It was, yeah. you know, just turret healing station for so, so, so long. Yep. And now that people play it that way, it's, it's one of the coolest things about the game is, you know, something completely new could just surface and all of a sudden that, that becomes the meta. So small switch here from Elevate, just the Imani exchanged out for the Vivian and that will be basically the same comp run back by Elevate. I don't expect different results. And there's Drogos looking real good. Cats on Mars, can they finish it up? We'll have to wait and see. I think uh, this one should be in the bag 3-0 for Elevate if they continue to perform at the way they have all season long. But let's see if game two can shake things up here on Frog Isle. Send it down to your casters to get it started. The barfing waterfall frog beckons us into Frog <laughs> Isle here. <laughs> I like, I wanted, to, I meant to mention this to you at some point, but I'll do it on air. I like the fact that when Nick said like the Inferno cannon gets used or something like that, you were just like, that's a sentence that's never been said before. That was <laughs> quality joke times. You know what? I appreciate it. I appreciate that, Gore. That, that was a 10 out of 10. That made me laugh, like, violently <laughs> while I was sitting at the desk. Good. That's, that, is, <laughs> that is what I like to do. I do it for you, Gore. I do it for you. And that's, uh, that's why we all do it. We're all here for a good time. <laughs> We're all here for a good time. Interestingly enough, no sniper bans or picked on Frog Isle. But they, and Evan made a really good point. They're willing to do it on Jag Falls, but going with a little bit of a different route on Frog Isle, surprisingly enough. Victor and Drogos taking the priority over uh, either Strix or Kinesa in this case. No snipers for either team. Leon, though, I guess you could kind of throw her into that mix. Um, not quite the, the same. The sniper. Whoa, she, like, fits the, the halfway range of it. The thing I think is better for Elevate here is that Ooh. they do happen to have two hit scans to try yeah. and take that Drogos out of the air. But the thing that's going against them is the fact that, well, G-Pan Velocity is a very good Drogos player. So yeah. you're going to have a lot of work cut out for you to try and take him down. And so far, I mean, Cats on Mars, they came out of the gate swinging. They did. That was one of the fastest first bloods, I think, of the day. Almost immediately in, getting exploded um, on the side of Elevate here. 81%. They need to get in here and get a touch. Going to be able to do it. Wonderful on the barrack again is going to be able to get a touch onto this one. 96%, 99%. Overtime is going to start going. Emmett Payne trading back one kill uh, onto Cool Mat. So that's the victor that's down. G-Pan needs to stay alive here. Oh, he's not able to. Trenzik finds the angle, finds the kill. And now Elevate, they retake the point. And they're marching towards 100 on their side. Still plenty of times, though. Times, multiple times. Still plenty of time for Cats on Mars to get back uh, and get a touch. But... Wow, this is some pressure. Kills are still yeah. coming out from Elevate deep in the base of Cats on Mars. I'll be honest, I've seen a lot of things in Paladins. I did not expect that to happen right <laughs> then. I was just like watching it. I was like, okay, this is going to be a typical zone. It's 99%. But, I mean, just as easily as Cats on Mars got 99, you can expect Elevate to be able to grab it. It's going to be this next touch that comes in handy for them. And then they just slaughtered wow. people, like two or three right out of the base. I thought it was going to be a little closer overall. It's not a long run from the spawn to the point, but when you're constantly getting harassed with that amount of pressure, that amount of damage, it's very difficult to even just show your head. That was one of the fastest melting health bars I've maybe ever seen, which is unfortunate. Dome Shield is going to answer back. Barrage, no targets yet, so 40% of the cooldown comes back um, for cool match. Just throwing it out, maybe hoping somebody rounds the corner. The overpower is going to be good uh, and send Emmett Payne flying here. Clever Pup, though, trades out his life, unfortunately. Finally, the kill comes through. Double kill now for the Atlas, buying some space for Elevate. Cool match just tanking back, trying to find some sort of sight line on Elevate. He's not really able to. Only the clone is going to eat some damage. There's a seismic crash. Goes on to one, but the shield comes out. That's a great shield right before getting stunned out, blocking a lot of the damage coming through. Taco Bell Waifu just trying to hold down this front line and find some damage. Eating a lot of damage is Trenzik, but the rewind's going to get him a second chance here in this fight. The health bar is coming back up. Nearly escapes but it's Cats on Mars who find the pick. And just a wild Drogos appears on Inara's screen. You see a Dragon Punch come <laughs> flying across as he's retreating away from Elevate. But they get the kills they need either way. They didn't need to continue pushing. They didn't need the Dragon Punch, so he maintains the 30% as it starts to charge up. They gave rid of Shu, who I'm going to give shout-outs for playing the Ying so far. I mean, we haven't seen, again, a lot of console in my eyes. It goes Genos, Ceres, 
insert another support where either it is going to be Ying, usually, or we've seen some Maldamas, so Shu being able to pull out the Ying, I think she's going to be very important over the next few months, as I think I've been noting like the last week or so. Yeah. And yeah. I think uh, I think she's a big turning point. Like, Illusory Rift with Morale Boost 3 and the fact that she already charges her ult pretty fast, like, it comes up pretty often. It's been it's been fun to see sort of how the the support meta shifts around um, with just with just Grover being off the table. How different priorities have, have kind of taken place here. Trenzic continuing his tear on this aggressive Atlas deep into the base of Cats on Mars. A little bit out of position, unfortunately, is Cool Mad who's going to eat the blast shot to the face from Trenzic. And look at this, he's zoning out. That's a good setback onto two, and they're not even going to be able to get out and get a touch. Wonderfully played there from Trenzic. Brings out the Exile, maybe a little bit overkill. Well, I, yeah. Not even maybe, is overkill. They'll be okay with it though, 2-0. Uh, just to be sure that nobody gets out, but well played from him. That was a good setback onto two. The setback was amazing, and you know, the Exile, and I think this is where he made the call. If he hits that first shot, I think you Exile, cancel, right? Yep. And it's just like, cool, got rid of him, maintain, what, 40%? Mm -hmm. Keep myself available, have that charged up relatively quickly next round. It's, I missed the first shot, I hit the second shot, and is 20% really worth it? Like, 20% isn't going to make anywhere near as big a difference as, like, if you maintain two, three shots overall and just cancel it out completely. So the fact that he goes for the call to just use them, I think there's probably a better play to be made, but at the time, that's the appropriate call I would give him. Yeah, no, I mean, that's fair. I mean, we're, we're, we're really splitting hairs if we're yeah, saying. If, we're, if, I'm, <laughs> if I'm dissecting how much ult charge that you're going to get based on how many shots you threw out for your exiles, you're doing something right, right in the rest right. of the round. <laughs> uh, uh, absolutely. If, that, if, that's the, if that's the gripe we have with the way you're playing, then you're doing something right. Elevator doing a lot right right now. There's a dome shield. It's going to buy uh, some space. Just hang around, dancing around behind it. No kills just yet. We saw an early first blood to start off the game, but the second point fight's going a little bit differently of a way. The seismic crash where comes through. I didn't quite see where it landed. Trenzic finds a kill onto the victor. Emmett Payne answers with one as well, so that's two now. For blue, Enemy three, four down for Cats on Mars. Only Khan left alive. Here come the Sentinels for Exodia, and he's going to be able to zone out and do some damage. I think it's worth pointing out. So now you can see Wonderful and like where he's dancing around here on the other side of the tree. Uh, that's where Trinzik was that entire fight, by the yeah. way. Like he just, he, there was a point where that seismic crash came through, and I believe that's who they were trying to stun out. I think out. so, yeah. But I don't think it connected on the Atlas, and Trinzik just was like, okay. I'm just going to move forward, and he just got in the face of Cats on Mars. The two front lines were down here, kind of in the forest and the jungle, doing whatever they could do to fight against the point. And so it left Trinzic kind of unhinged to fight up top. And uh, again, continuing the aggressive and the, and the wonderful pun completely intended front line play um, from Elevate. They've, they've really opened the space for the rest of the boys to come through and find some damage. Shu and Wonderful, the healer, the frontliner, finding the kills now for Elevate. G-Pan having an okay game on the Drogo so far. Uh, a one-for-one one trade there. Payload still moving forward, but it's three now. Four down for Cats on Mars. Elevate retake the payload here with a minute and 45 seconds left. Based on how they're playing, I'm very excited to see the post-game stats to see how much damage these front lines have put up because I think that is like the one thing. There's no Genos boost. There's no Tyra Mark. Like yeah, there's nothing this is just amplifying true damage. This. this is just them. I mean, just beating oh you my. down with these these guns. A lot of damage can come from Atlas, but we've seen Barrack, and it's one of those things you don't you don't you're not cognizant, I guess, of the Barrack damage. You just all of a sudden take as much as you can. This is about as clean of a game as you can hope for if you're on the side of Elevate. Those are some good exiles getting the frontliners out of the fight. Taco Bell Waifu is so low right what now. Ooh, that's a good second chance. Gets him out of way of the Dragon Punch, and they get damage onto G-Pan as well. Well played from Trenzic. Quick fingers there. I certainly would have pressed the wrong button and still eaten a Dragon Punch to the face if I were in that situation. Wonderful as well, staying alive with just a sliver of health left. Now back to full health is the Cats on Mars lineup, but their health bars are melting away. As I say, a talk about Waifu It's going to be the next one to go down here. The turret and Wonderful are going to see to that. This payload's going to go through and elevate. We're going to take the 4-0. Second time in a row, and I feel like that the beginning of the fight, beginning of the map, was a little misleading because, like, yeah. comes out literally on fire there for Cats on Mars, and that was about all of it. They, they, yep. It was all in one burst, and then it kind of <laughs> disappeared. That and I think the that at the beginning was they played really well, and then 
immediately elevate played the composition they had. Yep. They had two hit scan to deal with the Drogo, so he couldn't really float the way he wanted to. And once that pressure disappears, the entire team starts to kind of not click for Cats on Mars. Yeah, I mean, we, we mentioned how we don't get to see elevate all that often, but this is what you're missing is, is incredibly clean, incredibly good Paladins, arguably the best team of the console league teams. I I'd give it to them. We'll have to break that down Stand maybe this approval. week on uh, on Esports Week. We'll have to see what that goes. But if they continue the same way, this is going to be one of the quicker 3-0s of the day. It's 2-0. Send it back to the desk. Thanks, guys. Well, Elevate get Gore's stamp of approval for best team in the console league. They are playing like it's kind of hard to argue with 4-0s again. But this has been Sweeps Week. Pretty much everybody's 4-0, mm. essentially. Except for a couple of games here and there, worth some defense points. And yeah, maybe this is why we don't watch Elevate too often. <laughs> because we don't we don't get much substance, huh? You no. guys are good. There we go. Let's leave it at that. Wow, that would be so funny if we just ended the show there. <laughs> I think it'd be a worthwhile joke. It would be a worthwhile joke. Is that because is that because you think you know where this last game's going? Well, we've seen some indicators, Nick. I mean, do the numbers lie? No. Shout out to Wonderful's damage there. 73,000 on the barrack. One of two barracks to top damage by a sizable margin. Nobody even really close to him. Wonderful. He is indeed living up to his namesake here, and he continues to. He's got a couple trophies, a little ring action for the boy. No oh, deaths in this game. Deathless. What can you say? Not much. Not much at all. 12 KDA because of the zero deaths. That's the big play. If you can yeah. really min-max that, Technically wonderful. Technically an infinite KDA. De you're right. Technically infinite. Sorry, not even 12. <laughs> so at this point, who can catch him? Because that's raising. We should start put. Let's take that eight and just. <laughs> All right. That looks better. Like much, that. much better. Infinity point oh KDA. <laughs> there it is. The true infinity war elevates KDA versus the Avengers. Mm. I'm on Elevate I'm side. I'm on Elevate side, I think, at this point. And maybe it'll take an ensemble of heroes to bring him down. Cats on Mars maybe need to go to a new planet to see if they can find the secret sauce to get this man feeling uh, a little bit down, maybe find the kryptonite, so to speak. I really liked those uh, spunky Thanos memes we had brewing when there was yeah, almost was two great. in a row for him. That was great. That would have been awesome. And and you know what? Blame uh, Team Envy, who brought, brought their A game at the right time. <laughs> They Iron Man this the they, last they second. They did, they did. Brought their A game at the right time. Cats on Mars here with a ban on to the victor. It's done well for them. Uh, 74,000 damage. Last uh, map for Cool Matt, who is a veteran. He's a guy who's been doing it for a long time on many different champions. Mm. Um, so much deserved success to him, although the set not going to their way. Elevate with a, a ban on the Talus. So leaving open again two of the power picks, which they've yeah, used twice calling. now in the Atlas in the Con. Yeah, they uh, ban out a couple of very first pickable characters. Victor, I would say, is first pickable, first pickable on Stone Keep for mm -hmm, console. Mm -hmm. uh, Genos has definitely looked that way. Um, the end, the Imani we'll have to see. Supreme. I don't know if that's really first pick caliber for them. Atlas has been the choice when given it yes, for Elevate and Vivian. Is, you, you know rock solid if you've been watching any of the weeks of console league. She's almost permabanned. And at this point, Vivian and Atlas, like you mentioned, answer. against... What is a Barrack Imani? Not the worst matchup for, for, for Cats on Mars. I mean, there's a lot of control in the Imani. The the Pyre Bomb, the Frost Bomb, excuse me, can get exploded behind the shield of Vivian. Mm. Um, and, of course, hits very hard. So any form of record, it's going to one tap, that maybe two tap at most. Uh, that shield of Vivian is rocking. So I like that setup. I'm down to see this as well. Elevates EV. This is going to be this is a big con this is the here. conversation piece when it comes to crossplay between yeah. uh, between console and PC so I really want to see what can the best console team do with it. I mean the other thing is Cats on Mars, do they look as lost as we saw on Serpent Beach with Slopadopolis and Droxus? Because to me, it is just as hard to control an Eevee as in on console to track an Eevee with the controller and try to predict and hit all those shots. It's too much looking, too much moving around. So. Can they do it? The Leon, a great pickup with a little bit of auto aim. We see that even yep. in PC. Try to, uh, I guess, uh, be consistent against yeah, it. You be said consistent it's, it's tough to track it, yeah. it down, yeah. and, and why not bring two auto aim abilities? Enlightenment, if you can outread the ice block or out time and out ice block, it's the best turnaround ultimate in the game. Well, let's uh, see if Gore and Dave consider the way we're thinking and agree with it, because the Eevee should be a matchup uh, for the Leon that could go in the Leon's favor, but on console might be a little harder 
to do either side of that. Let's send it down to the casters and get ready for potentially our final game of the set. I mean, I think on paper, yeah, Leon traditionally would, would win a matchup against an Eevee, but you don't really get to see it on console all that often. What do you think about the Eevee? I will be honest. I was in that conversation, but a dog just walked by in the hallway, so <laughs> I got distracted. No, I think, Let's uh, clarify. I think Somebody walked by holding, <laughs> holding a, dog. a dog. You're right. <laughs> the dog was not walking. Uh, it was being carried. It was a cute dog. Either way, uh, Eevee's <laughs> really good in this scenario, and I actually think this is going to be one of those those moments where I, and I'm actually more excited to see it because this feels like a, well, if we're going to have to play against PC teams, we got to be able to play what the PC yeah. players are going to play. And we're going to have to play it well. EV was going to be big. That was one of the big points a lot of these teams have had, is that their EV can't match up to quite the same level that a PC EV can. And I'm interested to see. I think Leon is good at being able to take care of her. But the question is whether or not it's going to be enough. I also want to shout out Shu for switching off of the Ying and this time onto the Damba, because I think it just brings a lot to the table. And I think this composition is looking really good. And easily the best Damba skin as well. The uh, the Cactus Head Damba, by far the greatest Damba skin. You're wrong if you disagree with me. That's just a... Uh, Until the next update. <laughs> yeah, right. It's entirely... And I believe it's... Is it it's the battle, a battle pass that's coming through. Yeah. That yeah. is... Uh, I can't even remember what the name of the skin is, but it's Wizard Hat and Beard Snake. Mall Damba. <laughs> is oh. In my mind. Is Steel Force. <laughs> oh, I thought that's you, what it was called. I was about to ask. Oh, that's really I the name. I remember doing oh, okay. the update show. <laughs> that's right. I'm, I'm excited to see how Exodia performs on this Eevee, though. I, I imagine pretty well. We've seen Easy a handful of er, Easy Eevee a handful of times, I should say, on console, getting aggressive right now, chunking away at some of the health bars. But already 72 percent. They're just sticking the Inar on the point and letting her hang out. The rest of the damage coming through onto the cats on Mars. Elevate setting themselves up very, very well. But the follow-up damage needs to find a few of these kills here. Taco Bell Waifu is going to be the first one to fall. Emma Payne sees to that. And with only two kills for Elevate, they're ready to capture point number one here. Well, I was going to say we'll see what happens. Ash was able to get a touch, but I think every single person on Cats on Mars just got slowly but surely burned down. Health bars went away. And that point went to Elevate. I'm curious to see how this is all going to roll out because it's one of those things we don't get to see EV too often. But based on what I saw, kind of playing it not EV-esque. And there's going to be Cool Matt being able to get rid of Exodia oh. here. So I'm kind of wondering, is that going to be the interaction? Like, where is it going to stand overall? And I think Elevate right now are, well, admittedly just that far ahead that even in the 4v5, if you just remove the EV, they look like they could be successful. And then you throw EV into the mix. And yeah, as long as it's doing OK, you're set. And it's it's doing well, doing more than okay right now. Elevate. Find themselves with the team fight win. Ooh, that's a good route. Sets up so many kills for Cats on Mars, but the damage isn't there. They find one in the form of a kill onto Wonderful. That was a beautiful three-man route uh, from Cool Mat in this case, but the damage wasn't there. Instead, it's actually Elevate who turn around the team fight, find the kills. And this payload's round in this final corner with only Ash left defending, at least for five or so seconds. I see Wonderful has been having the same experience on Frontline that I have sometimes, where the best and most you can do is run around in circles around the payload because you're just <laughs> on your mount still. You're, you, you're doing your job. You're pushing the objective while your team is getting kills. And finally, he's going to be able to drop off and apply some damage here. But it was just exactly, I feel like, the mindset Elevate has. We're just like, well, you know, we just got to do the thing. We just got to do the thing, and they're doing the thing right now. Dread Serpent sends Clever Pup running towards the edge, but he's able to get himself out of the fear just prior to walking off to the side. They're going to back off from the payload right now. Uh, Exodia's pretty low on that EV, and going to get him nice and healed before they try to take this one again. Ultimate's ready on their side. Seismic nice. Crash, Exiles, Ice Storm already, Dome Shield, Convergence, Dragon for Cats on Mars. So three to three if you're looking at Ultimate Utility. This is Trensic now getting aggressive. He does have a sight line on Amani, but isn't able to do it. The Dome Shield comes out as well for Taco Bell Waifu. 15 seconds left. Are they able to burn away at this dragon? That's going to buy a lot of space, but not too much damage. They finally kill it off. Dome Shield times out as well. They used a lot to try to get that defended with still five seconds left. That's a good route, but the wall is going to stop a lot of the damage from coming through here. Setback just a little bit wide, but the barracks getting melted down right now. The bowling ball is going to keep him alive. Here's the seismic crash goes on to barrack. That's good for a kill here. 
now around to the backside. G Pan's going to be up top, trying to find as much damage as he can to keep his team in this team fight. But it's Exodia instead who finds a kill on the healer, and it looks like this one's going the way of Elevate. I mean, it's slowly but surely eking his way in. G Pan's not going to dash down, so no one's going to be around to stop it from moving forward. Either way, I feel like that's it's that unfortunate lose lose. Like, are you going to die up here? Are you going to die down there? But you have to choose. You're dying somewhere. <laughs> it's just not going to work out for you. And I think this is kind of, again, in tandem when it comes down to it. You have, right now, a really, really solid Atlas play coming through, right? So that's setting a lot of things up. Anara is doing, I guess, Anara things, really, when it comes down to it. Standing on the objective, making sure that the, the payload or the point is being captured. And then you can kind of switch over to the fact that Emmett Payne, 7 0 and 5, is not dying, is outputting a ton of damage, 12k more than the next highest. And. Again, it goes back to what I said. Yeah, wow. Eevee, at this point, it's not a, oh, is Eevee like a trick in the pocket? It seems honestly <laughs> like Exodia <laughs> just wanted to play it, and they yeah. said, sure, yeah, go I, for it. I think I think you're pretty pretty spot on on that one. I mean, they, they probably realize that kind of no matter, within reason, they throw at the wall, things are going to work out. The Ice Storm buying some good utility there for him. Mr. Pickles or excuse me, Cool Match, trying to stay alive right now. Mr. Pickles, of course, the healer, does not stay alive much longer. Exodia actually having a great game, I think, up to this point on the Eevee, working out very well. Clever Pup's just going to get staggered out. 93% going to become 100, and two points is going to become three here for Elevate. That was much cleaner than point fight number one for them. Now they're pushing around maybe this final corner of the PCL day. Uh, looking to end at 4-0 and looking to end the set 3-0. Pretty sure Exodia came in as, I, I believe, 3 1 and 1 and was able to pick up a couple kills at the beginning of that. And so, Eevee this round had a higher impact than we saw out of the last round. And there's going to be a setback and a second chance coming down from Trinsic. It's going to help chase down G Pan Velocity. Rewind one, rewind the other, and ideally you end up in pretty much the same spot. <laughs> yeah. The only thing that needs rewinding right now is maybe this game for Cats on Mars looking for a second chance at it. I'm not sure it would have made too much of. A difference, um, even if you were able to get a second chance. Elevator just playing at it well, an elevated level right now. Um, always a treat to get to see these guys play on the PCL stage. Here comes some ultimates. Assert Dominance gets a good stun, but getting out of it now is Emmett Payne. So well played from that side. A little bit out of position. Up top are the Cats on Mars. If Elevator are able to withstand some of these early ultimates, they could end up getting this one pushed through a little bit easier. I mean, they're coming up on, they have the Seismic Crash. They're about to have some Exiles. Sentinels are about to be back up. They have an Ice Storm. No Dread Servant immediately available. But at this rate, when you're looking at a minute left, you're going to have plenty of time to charge that up. And that's assuming none of them come out in that time in between. Uh, this is going to be at Gore. Three kills, two for Trenzik, one for Emmett Payne. The Dome Shield's going to buy a little bit of time, but the Ice Storm's going to be good onto Taco Bell Waifu. And Elevate, they have a clean day. 4-0 here for them on Stone Keep. 3-0 in the maps. And Elevate, they round out the day in a very, very good way. Ooh, that was good. They like that. look awesome. And yeah. that's the thing is, that's the, know, I mean, it's, it's when you look at this region and you see that that's the one versus two, right? Yeah. You, the question you would have for me when I say that I love watching Elevate play is why? And it's just because they do so much right. It gives you so much to talk about, right? Like, I, yeah. I love watching some of these teams, but sometimes, like, if we're, I'm going to throw them under the bus. If we're watching, like, East Storm Retaliation, yeah. it's kind of, what are well, you doing wrong? What, what, can, what can you do to close this out as a 4-0. Yeah. Elevator closing it out as a 4-0, and it's like, here's what they're doing right, and this is what I would love to see other teams step up to. Right. Elevate right now are the, like, they're the gold star. They're the one you want to be. They are. They're the ones you got to look up to if you're in the rest of this region. That's going to do it for our fourth set of the day. Let's send it back to, to the desk. Wow, that was hard to say to wrap up the day. <laughs> Dave and Gore are ready. It's Monday, and they powered through a great start to your week, as did myself and Pretty Hair, who's on the desk with me as well. Closing thoughts on the set on the console league today. Uh, frankly, a little bit surprised that Elevate don't get uh, really that corny, right? Mm -hmm. They come mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. super, super far ahead with nothing really to lose except for a little map differential, but they're just too far ahead for it to really matter much. Yeah. And they, uh, they keep it pretty uh, safe and locked. I think one of the big, bigger, you know, adjustments I've seen too, and there's been a lot of conversation, if you don't fall Twitter and things like that, of, of the console league having these kind of 
different sides and views. You know, one, there's been some slight protests for things. Two, there's been, hey, guys, we got to keep it professional. One of the things that's a consummate professional move, in my opinion, is winning hard, playing your best, even though you could jerk off and, and mess around and kind of be a, a little bit of a prankster and do something for fun. These guys, every single set today, handled their business. Yeah. And we've met, had many games where, even in the PGS prior, not just console, teams mess around. Yeah. And uh, that didn't happen today. So I, I do appreciate that. And I think, clearly, these teams are ready to go and head into MSI. Agent 0015 here. Zip, <laughs> zip, and 15 for shoe. Nice stuff. Emmett Payne, 10 and 0. Oof, that's a good one. Handling business. That's what it was today for Elevate locking down. Exodia on the EV. Little bit off the beaten path there, but it's uh, it's something that's always fun to watch when you feel like you have a guy that's confident enough to pull it off. What I do like is that harder to punish, I think, on console. Um, PC will be a different story for sure, but just a champion that creates room. And when you have great players who make great decisions on your team already, giving them even more room, it's just like you know giving somebody a, a contested shot versus a wide open shot. I, I think uh, you can expect Trinzic to make the right play every single time. Nice adjustment. Cancels the ult. Just realizes he can kill him. And he's been such a big factor and will be a big factor. So getting the hours in, getting the reps in, figuring out nice setback yeah. there. That was a very, very clean one. Trinzic and Elevate and the rest of these console guys will need a, an understanding and a mastery of this character if they want to truly compete <laughs> at the MSI. Wow, does that work in base? I think she was right. Right outside, right, outside right on the, the edge, okay. Yeah, she had a pinky finger out the door. I us say, that would be very interesting. The best, I believe, map differential in the league, 10-0 and 30. There's just so much going in their favor. That's perfect three O's across the board. And uh, Cats on Mars, I mean, still contested heated, it's like, all those teams playing their own different league when they play each other. Mm. And then Elevate just elevated themselves above the rest. The name, it, it just fits so perfectly. Yeah, and in the past, we've, we've had people uh, take the path of least resistance, which is fine. If, that, if that's the way the, set, the league is set up to be you know, able to be played, then play the game. Mm -hmm. I don't blame you for that. But I think a lot of people recognized Elevate and said, we should get out of this division if at all possible, <laughs> gentlemen. And maybe that's why NAPS4 is a little bit more competitive, because yeah. everyone said, you know, why fight this battle when we don't have to? Why fight fate? Obviously, uh, it's been a great... Great day today. Let's take a look at how it all transitioned. Sweeps week was never cleaner. I think we've had a lot of weeks that were sweeps weeks, and then we had one map slip in one way. Literally, both games on and off, although there were many games that were not played, 3 O's across the board. That's beautiful. Cleanliness there. With the lake shot With in the, the lake shot in the back? What do you... <laughs> What can you ask for, folks? I love I love your what you said. Don't threaten me with a good time. <laughs> <laughs> Nick's about to walk off before we can close the day. My name's Randy. That's pretty here, guys. Thank you so much for watching the Console League. It has been a fantastic, fantastic day uh, for all of us here in Palons Esports. And it's just kicking off the week. We've got the PML tomorrow at 11 a.m. Eastern time as well, 8 a.m. PST. We've got Esports Weekly on Wednesday, and we've got Thursday, Friday, PPL, of course. So stay tuned. Us four with production will be guiding you along with the action. As always, remember to never give up, never stop gaming. We'll see you all next time. Brought to you by Skillshot, Hi-Rez Studios, Evil Mojo, INAP, SteelSeries, Come <laughs> on.